Well, he only sent us five. Doubled and redoubled. Well, it saved the rubber tonight. This could go on all night. The last time I'm going to lose good sleep over a bridge game. Yeah, a man can't stay up all night and play good polo, too. What man can't? It hasn't hurt my rating any. Come on, I feel a grand slam coming on. Jim's right, Brian. You boys will have your hands full at Colorado Springs. I make it 12,000 points. We uh, count the last rubber. Check. At five cents a point, that makes 600 bucks. You fellas mind if I give you my IOU? There you are. 300 apiece. Don't say I never gave you anything. I owe you $300. <laughs> well, look, I'm not trying to be nasty, Kent, but I'll give this back to you for $3 cash. Don't be ridiculous. I'll give you a check for it just as soon as... I'll take it. Take yours too, Harry. Oh, no, Mr. Crowshank. Why should you pay for this? Just because you're president of the club? Nonsense. It happens that uh, I owe Brian. Well, I'll see you fellas at breakfast. Good night, Harry. Good night, Harry. Good night. I'm going to get a little snooze in. Yeah, me too. Good night, Jim. Good night. Good night, Good night. Jim. Come on, Bob. Good night. Good night, Bob. Well, maybe you're right about the sleep. I think we'll have the floor to make up the birds. I think I'll make about ten goals. That ought to hold Colorado Springs. I'd say them Santa Barbara if I were you. Papers there go in for bigger headlines. I'm not thinking about headlines, Prixie. Oh, uh, clear this off, will you, Porter, and make up the birds? Yes, sir. Say, what's that about you owing me some money? Have I overlooked something? I don't remember you owing me any money. Not money, but I do owe you something. Good straight talk has been coming to you for a long time. I know. Why, Brian Kent? I'm a wastrel and a spendthrift. Dissipated my father's fortune in two years. I've never taken life seriously. I haven't the faintest idea of the value of a dollar, and I ought to be ashamed of myself. Isn't that about it, Crookshake? You're pretty hopeless, Brian. How much longer do you intend to be a sponger? Sponge? Well, that's what you mean, huh? Say, you mean that $600 you paid and the other money I owe you? I've got three polo ponies back there in the stall, Carl. I'll turn them over to you. That'll make us even. Good. I'll take them. They're yours. That means you've got to pay the feed bills. And you better feed them well because they'll have to borrow the ponies from you. Oh, no, you won't. All right, but what good will I be to the team without those ponies? <laughs> I might as well resign. I was coming to that, too, Brian. What's that? Your resignation from the team. Resignation? <laughs> My resignation? <laughs> I got a good notion to take you up on that right now. That'll give your team something to think about. Colorado Springs next week, Santa Barbara, the East-West Championships. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding? I'm not kidding. The Polo Committee has been wanting your resignation for some time. You mean... Are you serious? I had hoped to avoid this, Brian. The boys all talked to me yesterday. You know, you're not dishonest, but you are completely irresponsible. Now, for the past year, you've been exploiting your friends, using your membership in this club to do it. The club isn't willing to put up with you any longer. I didn't know the fellas felt that way about it. Well, they do. I'll have to ask you to sign that. All right, if that's what they want. I'm really sorry about this, Brian. <laughs> For two bits, I'd get off of this train right now.
What's the best hotel around here? Oh, up that. Howdy, partner. <laughs> what do you call this? Fire engine. Nice up-to-date town. Pretty smart, ain't you? Is it a smart aleck like you that put this fire engine out of business? How so? By talking to me to buying that contraption. Oh, I take back everything I said about this town. You don't have to take nothing back. What's the matter? Don't you like the new engine? I hate it. I drove Annie here for 20 years. <laughs> Take you 20 years to get anywhere in this engine. <laughs> You're just like all the rest of them. Remember, young man, the race ain't always to the swift. I respect this old engine. Annie can do just as good today as she ever could, because she's got downright character. <laughs> you know, you remind me of a friend of mine. Who's that? His name's Crookshank. What? A man named Crookshank. Stranger in town. What do you think you are, the Ritz? <laughs> and with this drought going on, I wouldn't give you five cents on the dollar for all the ranches in the state. Well, that's just about what I'm paying for. But if the drought keeps up, how are you going to feed the cattle? I'm not interested in cattle. It's the land I'm after. Now look, Jeff. You just do as you're told and leave the business end to me, huh? Okay, you're the boss. But I still think you're making a mistake. What, at five cents on the dollar? How is the steak? Fair, very fair. I've had worse. And I've had better. Don't tell me little Rollo started out this morning and forgot to bring along his lunch money. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's just exactly what happened. <laughs> there you are. I'll take care of you later. You'll pay this check now. Sorry, old man. I'll take care of it later. You see, I expect to make some business connections here in town. Pay hey, or you've already made your business connections. Don't be ridiculous. Please, I'd like to see the manager. Take a good look. I'm the manager. <laughs> well, well, well. Perhaps you don't know who I am. I yeah, you're my new dishwasher. <laughs> Come on. Just a minute, please. You'll pay this check now. Are you willing to have it on your conscience if I become ill, very ill? If I wash those dishes, that's exactly what'll happen. I've tried it. I'll get water blisters, dishwater blisters. It causes my... Pay your bill or wash them dishes. Joe, fetch the apron. Possibly I fail to make myself clear. Oh, having some difficulty? Yes. I can't seem to make this... Uh, Gentlemen understand that sometimes another gentleman can find himself financially embarrassed. Well, what's your problem? Well, unfortunately, I checked my trunks all the way through to Santa Barbara. But I decided to stop off and size up prospects in this town. I may decide to locate here. But I got off the train this morning without any money in these clothes. <laughs> can you imagine? Sure. Same things happen to me many times. 
Here, Phil, take what this gentleman owes out of that. Is that all right? That's awfully decent of you. I hope I can return the compliment sometime. So you're thinking of settling here, eh? Oh, I might, if the right opportunity offers itself. What's your line? Brian Kent. Brian Kent? What's that? Me. Oh. Not interested in real estate, are you? Yes, I might be, if I could find a good proposition. Well, that's fine. As soon as you get settled, why look me up? I'll be very glad to. And thanks for saving my life, Mr. Baxter. That's perfectly all right. Goodbye. What do you think of that guy? Hey, he looks like a four-flusher to me. Yeah, and he's broke. Hey, you're getting awful soft-hearted all of a sudden. What do you want to pay that guy's bill for? Well, you never can tell. It might turn out to be a good investment. Sixteen red, you win again. <laughs> Sixteen on the red. There you are. Right there, sir. Nice work, old man. Lucky money. How much is worth? Ten bucks. Okay, so. All right, place your bets now. Get your bets down before the wheel rolls. Get your money down. Play it on the red. All right. Hold on. All right. Go ahead, Joe. Spend. There it goes. Watch it. Watch it. There it goes. There it goes. What? Ah, ha, ha. Sixteen on the red. Sixteen on the red. Watch it. Watch that little ball. Seven. Seven on the red. You win again. Here, buy a drink for everybody in the house. Yes, sir. Hey, Tony, I got some good news for you. Your friend Sue Fenders can't ship her cattle on account of not paying her back freight bill. Well, I could have told you that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I see you knew it, eh? Sure. You thinking of stepping in and helping her out? I've been considering that, yeah. But haven't you got about all the ranch lands you can handle? Why, I'd trade half of what I've got for Sue Fenders' place. But Aunt Sue must have been born stubborn. She's hard to talk business to. Besides, I... I don't think she likes me. But there's more than one way to make folks listen to reason, eh, Jan? Hello? Yes, right here. Aunt Sue, it's for you. It's from the telegraph office. Hello? Yeah, this is Sue Prentice. Telegram from the railroad company. Yeah, read it, please, if you will. Thank you. What is it? Railroad company. They won't accept our cattle for shipment until we pay our back freight bills. Almost $3,000. $3,000? $3, what they say. Thought it was almost that much. But after doing business with them for 20 years and never going into debt before, I... I didn't think they'd close down on me now. To lose again. All right, gentlemen, place your bets. Get your bets down now, all bets down. This truck key represents $50. Let her ride. All right, gentlemen, all bets down. Here we go. Place your bets. All bets down now. All right, go ahead, Joe. Spin it. Watch it. Keep your eye on the little ball now. Round and round it goes. Where it stops, who cares? <laughs> there it is. Single O repeat. You lose again. This represents $50. What's the hurry? Spin it again. That'll make it 100 What's this? His marker for $50. Go ahead. Tell him it's okay. Baxter will stand good for me. The only thing that'll stand good for you is 50 bucks. <laughs> I know. You're going to make me wash those dishes. No. I'm going to take it out of your hide. Oh, 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 oh. What are you waiting for? Stop that guy. Get that guy. Stop it. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'll leave it with you. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to leave it with you.
have some soup for you. This is heaven. Yes, I know, and I'm an angel. What? Shh. What? Where? You must rest. If you talk, I'll have to leave you. But, but listen. I mean it now. Dreaming. Here, Moses. Take some more soup and maybe it'll wake you up. Who's, who's Moses? We didn't know what else to call you. We found you down at the river in the bulrushes. Just like they found Moses. I'll tell you all about it later. Right now you must be very, very quiet. Excuse me, Aunt Sue. some kind of trouble? Anything I can do to help? Yeah, fork up a couple of thousand dollars. What, from these pants? <laughs> All I can find here is a plug of chewing tobacco. Seriously, is that what you want, money? That's your only problem. It's settled right now. How much do you need? Bill's right. I need a loan of $3,000. Now, now, Aunt Sue, don't you worry a minute longer. With my connections, it'll be a cinch. Are you serious? And now Bill can round up the cattle for shipment? I think we better wait till we get the 3000 bucks. You get busy with those oxen, Bill. I'll have the money by the time they're bunched together. Now, if I can get some kind of transportation, I'll go into town and get in touch with my banker. And use that old truck. It's the only thing running around here. I'll enjoy driving that. I'm sure you can trust me with it? I was going to suggest, Aunt Sue, that if the president of the Mint don't get that 3000 maybe you ought to talk to Tony Baxter. Don't want nothing to do with Tony Baxter. In 
trying to get his hands on this place for more than two years. And Sue's right, Bill. Well, he's the only one around here got any money. I'm just wondering where that engine killer expects to raise the money. Bill doesn't seem to have much confidence in Moses. Maybe not. But I guess you named that boy right. That dude friend of yours is back in town and wants to see you. What dude friend? Ah, oh, the guy you staked to a meal last week. He says it's important. Oh. Bring him in. Looks like another touch to me. All right, come on in. How do you do, Mr. Baxter? How do you do? I've intended looking you up for the past few days, but business pressures it appears. No scars from that scrap. Hey, what's the big idea, Gold Western? <laughs> How'd you guess it? I like it here. The wide open spaces. Gives a fellow a chance to breathe. I'm a guest at the Circle V Ranch. Oh, uh, Sue Prentice's ranch, eh? Yes. I've decided to let this country adopt me and shed the abilities of an outgrown civilization. Well, you certainly haven't overlooked much. <laughs> What's on your mind? Oh, small matter, Mr. Baxter, very small matter. You were kind enough to stake me when I first hit this town, and I want to pay you back. Good, but I've got to get in touch with my banker first. What's the matter? Didn't your trunk show up? <laughs> As I was saying, I've got a big deal on. It's imperative that I get in touch with my banker in Santa Barbara by telephone. Uh, <clears throat> would you lend me the four dollars to make the telephone call? Well, I don't see why not. Thanks a million, pal. I'll do as much for you sometime. So, uh, you're stopping at the Circle D, eh? Is your business deal with Sue Pettis? Yes, and I think it's going to be a good one. I'm going to raise $3,000 for her. Plenty of security. Well, she's got a pretty good ranch there. You oughtn't have any trouble getting the money. That's what I think. Well, wait a minute. Now, what's the sense of phoning to Santa Barbara for money? Why don't you try to raise it around here? Here's an idea. Say, how about you? You did me a good turn. Why shouldn't I steer this deal your way? Here's one proposition where you can't lose. You know, Baxter, that Circle V could be turned into a Garden of Eden. Ah, uh, now that's making it pretty strong, isn't it, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll admit I've never seen the Garden of Eden, but I'll bet it never had a better river running right through it than the Circle V has. Someday, Baxter, this community's gonna realize the value of that water. Flowing gold to make 3,000 thirsty acres into a paradise. All right, Kent, you've sold me. I suppose you want Sue Prentice to think the money's coming from you. Oh, well, yes, if you can fix it that way. Oh, that'll be easy. $3,000. And there's the mortgage on the Circle V made out in your name. On the face of it, Sue Pentis owes you $3,000, payable in 30 days. Now, she signs the paper first, then you give her the money, right? Well, sure, but where do you come in, Mr. Baxter? I still owe you $3,000. Well, that's simple. You endorse the mortgage over to me and put it in the bank. And then, uh, I'll take care of the rest. That'll still make you a big shock with Sue Prentice. I don't like that remark. Yeah, that was pretty fresh, Jan. Hope you appreciate what I'm doing for you, Mr. Baxter. I do. Plenty. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Say, that's no way to handle a horse. Wait a minute, Sam. I can't do anything with this old nag of yours. Well, I'll show you what. Bring him around here. You'll never get him to do anything if you treat him like that. What do you know about? Him? Please, don't do that. I don't like to see a horse beat. Go and get rid of him. What are you going to do? Sell him? Yeah. What do you want to do? Buy him? Sure. I'd like to have him. Well, there's no credit on that horse. I'm not kidding, Baxter. I need a horse, and I'd like to buy that one. All right, you can have him for fifty bucks. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. It seems like taking advantage of your good nature, but. I'll toss you for him. Double or nothing. Well, you're some sport of that, aren't you? Got a coin? Sure. Toss it up. Heads. You lose and I get the horse. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, 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 oh. Easy, easy. Say, Kent. <laughs> if you'd have lost, how are you going to pay me? Oh, I was going to take care of it out of my next deal. Well, I hope you don't break your neck. The cattle will be in Kansas City in no time now. 
and sold for enough to pay up everything. You've just about saved my life, Moses. <laughs> You've certainly befriended us. We do appreciate it so much. I'm glad I could have been of some help. Hey, folks, where'd this horse come from? Did you get a horse? Uh-huh. Oh, is he yours? He's a nice-looking animal. He ought to be. Cost me a hundred dollars. Really? Nearly a hundred dollars? Yep, nearly. Oh, <laughs> Bill, Bill, Mr. Kent got the money for us. Take it and pay off all our debts. Holy mackerel. Now we can ship the cattle at once. Say, uh, I guess I had you all wrong. Start rounding them up, will you, Bill? Right away, Mr. Kent, right away. Oh, and have someone pick up your truck. I left it in town. Anything you say, Mr. Kent, anything you say. I wish we could tell you how happy you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what have you decided to name him? Well, I haven't thought yet. Let's see. Oh, I know. Why don't you call him Friendship? That's a good name. You think Friendship could stand another trip to town? Oh, I'm sure he could. I promised to return that paper to the bank today. I'd like to come along. Oh, I'd love to. All right, you go and get ready, and I'll saddle up your horse. All right. Come on, Friendship. in my time, but I don't know. This one seems kind of different to me. Soon, thanks to you, it'll be harvested. You're magnificent, Brian. Why? Well, after all, we're practically strangers. Well, you don't know what your kindness means to Aunt Sue and me. Ah, I haven't really done anything. Oh, I mean it. Well, that's just like you. You don't want us to feel that we're under obligation to you. You should be very contented. Some way or another, I do feel kind of happy. You know, I think everyone does. When he does something unselfish for someone else. Does that always make you feel good? Well, yes, whenever I do anything really unselfish. Well, now that you mention it, I do feel awfully good. Now, look here, you're teasing me. <laughs> but you're just that kind. You like to give and you don't want to talk about it. No, you got me all wrong, Betty. I'm not that kind of a fellow at all. Well, what kind of a fellow are you? Well, would you like to have me tell you what some of my friends think of me? Hmm? They think I'm a spendthrift, that I don't know the value of money, that I've never done a useful stroke of work in my life, that I'm thoroughly unreliable and selfish, and should be ashamed of myself. Oh. Well, they couldn't be real friends, Brian, or they'd know better than that. I don't know. I have been pretty useless, I guess. Maybe I'm getting next to myself. I can't imagine what's happened to me, but... I have a feeling I'd like to get right down to earth and help harvest that wheat. I'd love to see you do it. Oh, it'll be a great experience. Such a tremendous satisfaction follows the harvest. I, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but when you think that with your own hands, you harvest the wheat, which afterwards is used for bread. And pie. Do you bake pie? <laughs> Some of the flour and I'll show you. <laughs> Good. I get into any trouble taking these sick cattle out of here, Baxter's going to take the rap. Oh, sure, you can depend on him. Ain't there no other way we can hold these good cattle without mixing them with these sick ones? Yeah, but that's the way Baxter wants it. Say, if you're going to go yellow on me, I can get somebody else to help me. Well, I'll help you, all right. But it's his responsibility. Remember that. That's right. Be careful now. We don't want anybody to see us. How do you like my follow through? Are you getting tired? <laughs> hundred more strokes and I'll make it far. Well, you go right ahead with that. I'm going in the house and help with supper before you eat up all my apples. All right. As soon as I finish this, I'll put the horses up. 
I have to complete my day's chores, you know. Where is everybody? What does this mean? I don't know. Even if they do let the cattle out of quarantine, they can't be marketed in time to pay back $3,000 in 30 days. Oh, if that's all, I'm sure it'll be all right with Brian. Uh, Mr. Kent, he said he'd see you through. And I suppose he lends you enough more to get in the wheat, too, huh? Oh, the wheat. Why, yes, I'm sure he will if he can. Well, I wouldn't be too sure. Bill, what's the matter with you? I thought you and he'd made it up. Yeah, but I just got to thinking. Makes sense, too. Looks to me like somebody maybe mixed some foreign critters in with your cattle. Oh, Bill, why would anybody do a thing like that? Well, they wouldn't. Unless maybe they didn't want you to get any $3,000 in time to pay off your debt. Then they could foreclose on your ranch. Oh, Bill, don't be ridiculous. Mr. Kent wouldn't do such a thing. Well, what did he want with this ranch? Maybe he wouldn't. Not just for himself. But now that I got to figuring it out, he went to town to telephone and got back with that $3,000 gosh awful quick. And that horse he's been riding seems to... I got it. That horse belongs to Tony Baxter. Bill, how can you even suggest such a thing? You know how considerate Mr. Kent's been. That's what I'm thinking about. He's been awful considerate. Funny, too. The only cattle around here troubled with anthrax also belongs to Tony Baxter. Oh, Bill, you're all wrong. Yeah? To prove it, we'll ask him to extend the mortgage. He'll do it, too. Hey, how about some supper? Kitchen's deserted. What's the matter? What? Look, read that. Well, this is terrible. Yep. Might be awful terrible. You got any ideas? Let's think of something. Money for the mortgage now, before it's due. Could you extend it, Brian? Of course. I'll take care of it right away, first thing in the morning. We'd like to get it settled tonight. All right. I'll go right into town now and get in touch with my banker. Are you going to see Tony Baxter? So you can tell him that your scheme worked? Scheme? What scheme? You ain't fooling nobody, Kent. When I put them steers in the cars, they were sound as a dollar. The only chance they had of getting anthrax was for Tony Baxter and you to put it there. He's the only one got any anthrax cattle around here. You're crazy. I am, huh? But it's the truth, ain't it? Of course it isn't. It's ridiculous. Betty, surely you don't believe that. Have you been acting for Tony Baxter all along? No, I got the money from him, all right, but you don't understand. So it was Tony Baxter's money. I think I understand you perfectly, Brian. You've been taking advantage of us just because we trusted you. And you place us in debt to Tony Baxter, who's been trying to get this ranch from Aunt Sue for years. I'll admit it does look like a scheme. But if Baxter did anything to those cattle, I knew nothing about it. I wouldn't believe anything you said. You've been trying to make a monkey out of me, haven't you? And I want an explanation about those sick cattle. You're the only one around here whose cattle have anthrax. Say, what do you mean by that? I'm wise to you, Baxter. You're just trying to get a hold of that ranch, and you've used me as a tool. I'm the goat. If you haven't got the 3,000, why don't you call up your banker? I got a better idea. No, Betty. The banks ain't lending any money on account of the drought. Oh, but Aunt Sue, there must be something we can do. There's got to be something. Get off the line. I'm talking to Santa Barbara. All right, Santa Barbara. Yes, I can hear you, Santa Barbara. How's that? 
Okay, Santa Barbara. <clears throat> Was that Santa Barbara? Yes, but the party refused to accept the charges. Are you sure they asked for the right party? Mr. Crookshank, Hotel Santa Barbara. Of course, if you want to pay at this end, it'll cost you four dollars. Providing you talk fast. Oh, never mind. I'll get in touch with them some other way. Don't go away. I'll be back. For the amount of business this restaurant does, I don't see how they use up so many dishes. It'll be a lot worse tomorrow. The town will be full of people for the cross-country race. I've been thinking about that. You want to make some money, Mr. Kent? I wouldn't be opposed to it. Why? A lot of people are betting on Betty Prentice to win tomorrow. Betty Prentice? Is she riding? Sure. She's riding Dolphin. And she won last year. But I heard Phil and Mr. Baxter talking, and they're certain she won't win this time. What makes them so sure? Well, I don't know. But I heard Phil tell Mr. Baxter she wouldn't have a chance. What he said was, don't worry, that Prentice girl won't have a chance. Not with me in the race. So Phil's riding too, is he? Yes, and he's a good rider. So I thought if you bet on him... Did you hear him say anything else? No, nothing much. They just went on saying something about harvesting wheat and getting harvest hands and such. Where you going, Mr. Kent? I'm going to see if they'll take another entry in that race. This race, I'll be out of ranch. It's rest easy. I'll take it. She ain't gonna win. Ladies and gentlemen, this race will be five miles. The contestant first riding once around the track, then leaving for the cross country course. When they return to the track, they will ride once more around it before crossing the finish line. All ready?
Ben Kent. You showed splendid horsemanship. Splint. And it's my pleasure to present you with the first prize of $500. Thank you. And you did exceedingly well, Phil. I'm terribly sorry, Betty. I had nothing to do with crowding you off the road. Please, let me alone. I'm going to Grant City Junction. Maybe I can raise enough on them quarantine cattle to harvest the wheat. Oh, Aunt Sue, do you think there's There ain't a chance. No, there might be. I'm going to try anyway. Sounds like a wild goose chase to me. Anyway, here's some money for gas. I don't want Better to. take it anyhow. Thanks, Bill. Well, if we're going to drive that truck to Grant City Junction, we'd better get started. Where did you get that? Downtown. Like it? Is it yours? Eleven more payments than it is. Well, what do you think you're gonna do with it? Bring in Aunt Sue's harvest. Do you mean it? Sure, I mean it. It reaps the wheat and threshes it too. We don't need any hands. Now I know I had you all wrong. Put her there. Say, do you mind if I get up on that thing? Just for a minute. Oh, I should say not. You might as well get used to it. You're going to have to help me run it. Crack her up, Art, and we'll give them a ride. Cheer up, dear. We ain't licked yet. We'll work everything out some way or other. Yes, I know, Aunt Sue, but I think how we were taken in by Brian. And I thought he was one person I could trust. Yeah. That's the real disappointment. Thank you very much. The engine just quit. Looks like that dude double crossed you. Yeah, I wanted that John Byron Harvester myself. I guess I was trying to drive too hard to bargain. If they get that wheat in, you're gonna be kind out of luck, ain't you? But they won't get it in. Jed? Which way is the wind blowing? In the west right now. Say, you ain't thinking of destroying all their wheat, are you? Well, why not? It's good land, we can grow another crop. Say, look, Jen, you better go over and inspect that new fire engine. You know, we want to be sure it'll get there if a fire should break out. I got you. Do you suppose by any chance you forgot to put gasoline in this thing? Gasoline? You're right, Bill, it's empty. Oh, shucks, just when we was a-going good. Never mind, I'll go to town and get some. Think I can haul five gallons on a horse? I think you can do anything. Hey, Art, run over to the ranch and bring back some drinking water. Okay.
There you are, five gallons. That'll be 80 cents. You'll send another 20 gallons out to the ranch today, sure. As soon as I can get a truck, Mr. Kent. That's a fire. Wonder where it is. Let's go find out. She won't start. Where's the fire? Wheatfield, Circle B. Circle B? No use. What's the matter? Ah, somebody's been tampering with the motor. Little boys who play with matches, Tony? The only disappointment I got is the United States government will have preference over me. Government, eh? What let me? Oh, not long. About 30 years. 30 years? I guess I won't be living to beat you until you get out. <laughs> I 
I was wrong about Moses. He saved your harvest.